Hello again. I just wanted to keep on going on Nero Gate, Nero Way. Uh, there's a sermon given by Paul Washer, which he uh, put into book form. So we're going to go. So we're on chapter 5, Fruitless Professions of Faith. The Lord Jesus warns us, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he, he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Matthew 7, 21. Do you know what your profession of faith in Jesus Christ is worth if you don't bear fruit by doing the will of the Father? Absolutely nothing. Did you read that passage? Study it. Not everyone who comes to Christ and says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not all who make a public profession of following Christ are Christians on their way to glory. There are many people who are going to profess, Lord, Lord, but they are not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Could it be that you are one of them? Let's again go back to the Hebrew literature. Christ spoke of those who say, Lord, Lord. He didn't say, Lord, just once. What does that mean? The fellow who is making this profession is not someone who all of a sudden decided, the judgment is coming, and I had better profess Jesus to be Lord. This is a person who emphatically declares to other people that Jesus Christ is Lord. He walks around saying, Lord, he sings movingly up front while the musicians are playing, saying, Lord. He sings the songs and says, Lord. But Jesus will say to him, I never knew you. Depart from me. Billy Graham was one of the kindest, most loving, most loving men. Even so, he said he believed that a great majority of people who attend Bible-believing churches are lost. He said that he would be happy if even 5% of the people who made professions of faith in his campaigns are even saved. I visited a mother in Nigeria whose son was in our church and martyred by the Muslims. In northern Nigeria, when someone professes faith in Jesus Christ, you know that person might soon die because of the profession. That gives their testimony some credibility. But what of America? How we need to consider the cost? Think. Examine your life in light of the scriptures. Do you know the Lord? Not everyone who says to him, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. What does it say in the Bible? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. What is the sign that someone has become a genuine Christian? I wish that we would start teaching this again. What happened to our theology? What happened to our doctrine? What happened to our teaching? It went right out the window. No one wants to study doctrine anymore. People just want to, to listen to songs and read the back of Christian t-shirts. What happened to truth? Truth tells you this. The evidence, the way you can have assurance that you are genuinely a born-again Christian, is that your lifestyle conforms to the will of the Father. You might say, oh, you're just talking about works. No, I am not. I'm talking about evidence of faith. And it goes like this. Your profession of faith is no proof that you are born again. Because so many in America profess faith in Jesus Christ, the pollster Barna tells us that 65 to 70% of all Americans think they are saved, born-again Christians. And yet we look like one of the most godless countries on the face of the earth. We kill 4,000 babies a day, but supposedly 70% of us are born again. How, does, how do you know that your faith, that the faith you have is not false? Where is the style of, of life that is concerned about doing the will of the Father, that practices the will of the Father. When a Christian disobeys the will of the Father, the Holy Spirit comes and reprimands that believer, either personally through the written, written word of God or through a brother or sister in Christ, and God puts his child back on the path again. If you are a genuine Christ, Christian, you cannot escape him. Let me give you an example. Suppose I were your pastor and you were 14 years old. And I came back from preaching at one o'clock in the morning and saw you standing out there in the park or on the street corner with a bunch of hoodlums doing things you should not be doing. If you are a member of our church, I would tell you, get in the car. I would take you home to your father. I would not be mad at you. I'd be mad at your father. I would tell him, sir, you are a derelict father for allowing your child to be out in such circumstances. I want you to know something. God is not a derelict father. If you can play around in sin, if you can love the world and the things of the world, if you can always be involved in the world and doing the things of the world, if your heroes are worldly, if you want to look like them and act like them, 
If you practice the same things they practice, then please heed my words. There's a good chance yet that you do not truly know God and that he and that you do not belong to him. That seems good for today, one chapter. I'll just, uh, let's pray for a second before I close out. Oh, God. Father, I just pray that you humble us before you. God, you examine our hearts, not by the world's standards, but by you, by your word, by what Jesus Christ did for us, God. Father, convict us in our spirit. When we fall short, reprimand us and lead us back to you. Father, we are an evil people. We choose sin daily. But if that sin leads us more and more into the world and not to you, then we need to examine where our life is, examine where our faith is, examine where our love is. God, I just pray open our hearts and our minds. Anyone who is listening, God, just soften their hearts to be humble enough to look, look deep into themselves and look deep into your word and look deep into you. Say, God, I believe, and I believe because... And the because is because you are all around. You encompass our lives. And that's all we want. God, and for those who are not sure, God, lead them to somebody who will guide them in your word, Father. Father, take us away from this temptation that we live in. God, for those who are far from you or those who are living in sin and choose that way, even though they know the truth, God, open their eyes and hearts, God. Lead them back to you. God, we got to stop living in this world. I, I'm so sorry for the sins I've committed, God, and I pray forgiveness over so many people. God, without you, we are empty. There's a void that nothing can fill. No sin can fill any void. We have only you. God, and we praise you and we love you. We glorify your name. In the holy name, the name above all names, we pray in Jesus Christ. Amen.